that teachers would come to this <laughs> and we could help them figure out how to set their students up for a GIN project and get going and then after MJ's talk this morning I thought oh crap we better change this quick because I don't I think a lot of kids are going to come so we've changed the title setting yourself up for success and I think you may notice and get this idea <laughs> sorry <laughs> I think he's fine that um, <laughs> that MJ is setting herself up for success. Um, you choosing to be here is a step in your success. Right. So we, yeah. <laughs> Except the kids out here for detention. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to sort of share a little bit. Oh God. Move that back. I mean, I have to like stay in one spot. It's gonna be really hard. Um, <laughs> Well, that's my tape. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted to share with you and have an open discussion. You guys ask questions on how do you get from, I know a little bit, I'm getting pretty good grades, I'm doing okay, to being a leader in your school and setting yourself up for success. Um, so we also wanted to talk about how our process, I guess, with Sea Savers, our very not democratic process, as Rob talked about yesterday, um, so we're just gonna like talk for a little bit and then the idea is that you guys ask us whatever you want whether it is from like what we do what I do in college what we did with sea savers there's a couple of sea savers here so that are still doing things so um, so um, will you show the, the chart yes and so thinking of teachers and thinking of how teachers get you guys inspired and how do we get you going and thinking about ideas there's a chart that's not Facebook. <laughs> There's a chart that teachers use to figure out how to inspire and encourage students to think on their own. Like, like our goal as teachers is to create thinkers who are critical in their thinking skills and can start making decisions on their own. And I think when you look at this chart, the, these are like the categories. The learner, the learner is you, you are the learners. So as a teacher, I have to think, I want my learners to engage in scientifically oriented questions. I want you to ask the questions. And so as teachers, what we often do is we start too far left on this chart. So you can see left learner poses a question. That's like, okay, what question do you have? And you're like, uh, about what? The guy, I don't know what you're talking about. I have a lot of questions. Right, right. I have a variety of right. Which do you want? And then here is, you engage in a question that I gave you. I think what happens to you in your life sometimes is your teachers start too far on the left side of this. Instead of saying, I have a question that I want you guys to explore, let's explore this together, and then we're going to work across this chart together. So like Maria Jose said, when Sea Savers first started, um, and like Rob said the other day, it was not a democratic process. Under any definition. Of I didn't sit here and say, okay students, if you'd like to apply to be a sea saver, please fill out an application. I, as the teacher, said, I really like you, I like your work ethic, I like how you act in my class, and I think you're a cool person, you're gonna be a sea saver. It was not optional, by the it, way. Right, no. Once, <laughs> once she chose you, it's, you were a sea saver. Right, so I didn't allow students to apply on their own. I picked my leaders by hand. And what I want you to know about that is kids, students, girls and boys in this classroom, you have to stand out. You have to show your teachers that you're interested in being a part of whatever's going on, and you're at awesome international schools where there's a lot of stuff going on. You want to be the one getting picked. So that first year of Sea Savers was very much, and then of course I was picking kids that I knew, so it was students that I taught. So I would look in my class and I'd say, you, I want you, you, I want you, we're gonna go on a field trip. And after that first field trip, I said, you and you, you're out. Forget it, you're not, like, you're not even living up to my minimum expectations. I can't have you in this club anymore, bye. You and you, you're gonna stay, and we're gonna move this project forward. So that first year of Sea Savers, I don't know, who was in Sao Paulo last year? Lala, you don't count, sorry. Yeah, one person. So in Sao Paulo last year, the Sea Savers were able to present their topic for the very first time. So this idea of how do we kill this lionfish to save our coral reefs. The second year it became, now that I have got my leaders, I can 
even step out of the picture. And I really stepped out of the picture big time. And she became my leader. And Laura Los Mosos became my leader. And Maria and Laura became my leader. And they were able to now recruit the kids they want. How democratic was that? It was a tad more democratic. I mean, we did give out, so we gave out um, application forms, so you could apply to be a sea saver. And then we sat with all these application forms, and we're like, <laughs> you had to write like questions and stuff, and you all assumed that we read them, but we just read your name, and if we didn't like you. Oh, nine. If your reputation <laughs> didn't support our mission. So this is one of the things that I think is important when you're thinking about your, your daily actions, the choices you make on a daily basis. Define who you are. What you choose to do at school, what you choose to say, who you choose to hang out with, what water bottle you choose to carry, defines you in the eyes of people around you. I'm a human being. I judge all of you. <laughs> Actually. You, she hated me with a passion. Oh, this is a good story. <laughs> she hated me with a passion. I was in her, we were, we were you in hated together. me too. Well, yeah, I, I was going there. Okay, so I hated her as same as badly. I hated her class, I hated her, I hated everything she stood for. Then at some point, I felt like every day that period, I'm like, oh. And I would sit in the front of the class and like put my feet up on the oh, desk and, and be like. she never shut up. <laughs> Have you met yourself? Um, so, anyway, um, so eventually we started liking each other, and it was literally because we saw what each other liked. Instead of looking at our differences, which were actually all similarities, but let's <laughs> not talk about that. Um, instead of looking at our differences, we started seeing, we went on a field trip to watch birds in, in, the, in the Jardin Botanico, and we were like the only two ones obsessed with birds. And then we went to like Fronton, which is a beach here in Dominican Republic. We were camping there and doing like reef checks and stuff. So it's, your teachers are judging you all the time, firsthand here, judgy. But the judgment can change, <laughs> right? Like it's but not it a permanent judgment. Exactly. One of the things that benefits you people in this room, I have recently moved back to the States. I teach in a public school. It is night and day working at a private international school. The teachers that are at yeah, your school's teaching you are part of your family, whether you like them or not. They live in a foreign country where they don't have any of their own family, or they do, but it's only a few people. And you are their family. She, she's actually my older sister, we call her, because she's way more mature than me in so many ways. So she's not my daughter, she's a sister. Um, and we care about you, we're watching you, we're looking for opportunities to bring you forward. You know, she said, slow down, stop, da -da 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 -da. We, we're thinking about the up part. How can we move you up? We're your teachers, this is what we want for you. This is why we're here in this profession. So yes, the story started with, I couldn't stand to be in the same room with her. And it was a few months. Yeah, it was yeah. for a while. Yeah. It was, and it was also an AP course, it was also an AP course. So we should have gotten along and been able to do work like that. So we're human beings and we're watching you, right? So now we get Sea Saver started. Marie and I figure out a relationship that works. We start talking about things that we have in common. You go on trips. And one of the things is you're fortunate enough to work at schools where people have resources. I work at an Ameri a school in the United States where my kids are Poor, 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 food stamps, welfare, homeless in a car. They don't have any resources. They, I was going, her a dad actually, and her dad were gonna sponsor two of my kids to come here to see you guys today, and they couldn't get passports to leave the United States. Was, like horrifying. You guys don't have that. You are already in a situation where how are you gonna set yourself up for success? So what do you, you, I think you should explain the levels of stubbornness because Maria introduced <laughs> stubbornness into her presentation today. Can you put up the, yeah. That's a quick question. Who came up with the C Savers idea? Was it you? And you said you picked? No, it was actually, we had, we had, a, so we had a gin club. Our original name was, you're not on the tape. We had a gin club. So our original, we were at the GIN club. Yeah. So when she recruited us, she gave us a copy of Richard's book of the pages she actually liked the most. 
Yeah, I picked a few so, chapters. So, the chapters that she liked the most of Richard's book. And then, so we, she just gave us like, so now let's decide what we want to work with. Originally, birds. that bird trip was because we were going to work with birds. I'm not sure how that, why we, I don't know. But, originally we were going to work with birds and then we had a really, really stubborn student in our group oh, who Maggie. kept on telling you us. You Maggie, the crazy girl with the thing. <laughs> So she was telling us that we had to work, we were She's in like, that. She's like, And we're like, shut up, Maggie, God. But see, this is the stubbornness. This is the you. How are you going to be successful? She, she didn't let us shut her up. We said, come on, the birds, they're cool. Let's do birds. Can you imagine if we'd done birds? And Maggie was like, birds. and then she's like, but, but I scuba dive. We're like, yeah, good for you, Maggie. None of us do, we don't scuba dive. Like, come on. But Maggie did not, she did not let go. She did not let us stop talking about it. And then we went to Frontone, which is this great beach where you go snorkeling and you learn about the coral reefs. And we're like, this is perfect. And it was quite literally, there was like one moment that Frontone, you, you, there's a farallon, that's why I call it Frontone. So you go up to the top of this like hill and you look out, you like go through all the trees and you look out and all you see is like the, the, that coast, that beach. And there's literally nothing there. It's a private beach, like not private. It's like uh, there's no so bathrooms. There's, there's no nothing. Shower. You there's have to go camping there. And we just like looked at each other and we're like, how can we not do this? So it was very much inspired by what we saw out there. But no, we didn't originally start with that idea. And as a teacher, you know, I had my own tent, and I woke up at sunrise like super early, and I look out, and there's not all my students like seven students lined up next to each other because it was kind of chilly by the beach in the morning watching the sunrise and then that's when I said these are the people that I want in my life these are the students that I want to be around as a teacher here in this foreign country where I don't really fit in and I don't have any connections with this is who I want to make as part of my family that's kind of what your teachers are doing they're looking for these small connections and you're not going to connect with every teacher that's not the expectations. I don't connect with every student. Come on. But you are going to find someone in your school who you connect with and you can start an amazing story with. Yeah. And, and the hard part is you work in a school where teachers come and go a lot. Yeah. So the connections don't have to stop. Like she said, we still keep in touch all the time because she's now in the States. But what I, I also wanted to touch on that, the fact that I also, I'm also here to talk to you guys about like getting into college and how that whole process works. So if you have any questions about that. But part of your application is a teacher recommendation. Not only do you have to get along with one teacher, but you have to get along, like be a normal human being that all teachers appreciate, that all teachers think like, well, she's decent. Maybe I don't have a relationship with her, but she's decent. Because it's not a, it's not Miss Yema alone that is writing my recommendation. It's Miss Yema with the opinion of Miss Mooney and Mr. Pai and this person and that person. And so if everyone's telling her, no, she's a horrible student, she's not going to say like, yes, NYU, you need to get this student. She is fabulous. So you have to be thinking about that. And also, one of the things that we wanted to talk about was the idea of getting involved with a lot of things that you feel passionate for. So, one of the speakers yesterday talked about not staying with like just one thing. You can have more than one passion. Prague. And that's Prague. Yeah. Prague, right? Yeah. Of course. And so you can, you don't have to stay with one thing. You can touch into many different things, and that also helps you a lot in your applications. I'm not saying that you should do things for your applications. Do, do not do that, because people see through that, and if you have 600 hours of community service, and then your teacher's saying that this student doesn't really do much, she's not very motivated, then the, the universities will see that, and they'll be like, well, this is wrong. This is, there's something wrong here. So, also, a lot of the focus, you guys are all very, we're always very focused on like grades, GPA, what are we, like, what are our grades? My grades, I had good grades, decent grades. I didn't have, I didn't have straight A's under any like definition of having straight A's, but I did have good grades. You passed calculus. Oh, you didn't. Oh, okay, so she didn't pass calculus. I actually, I graduated with 
But um, I did pass that. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, but so it's not only grades. It's your you, uh, universities assess you as a human being. So I want to see everything that you do, not just your grades. So it's not only getting good grades. That's an important part. But you also need to like be a well-rounded person that is involved with like and has a passion for things. It's not just like I do everything, but I don't really feel anything for any of that. That kind of brings up, I'm thinking about the argument that why give 20% here, 20% here, 20% here to these things that, I mean, I'm passionate about a lot of things. I care about the turtles and the puppies and the, mm -hmm. the plastic and the, you know, I care about it all, but how do I balance my energy and what's, how is that better than giving, or not necessarily better, but than giving 100% of what I have to one thing? I think it's very much like, um, it's what is sort of what I touched on today. I had a passion for coral reefs, and I worked with them for a really long time, and I focused my energy on that. But I also helped on the side with like one thing. You don't have to be the head of everything that you're in. You just have to do whatever you can on like take like. Well, I like Operation Smile. I never worked with Operation Smile, but let's say I liked Operation Smile, and I knew they had an event, so I just drive by and support them that Saturday, take a picture, upload it, like Operation Smile on Facebook. It's it's very much doing like whatever you can in whatever like field you feel passionate for. And sometimes it's as much as like edu maybe even educating yourself on whatever like you don't like plastic but you can't really work with that, you're doing math. And so we're just gonna read and be educated about plastic. So if someday someone anywhere has a question about, so do you, does anybody remember why plastic is bad? You're like, well, I actually know. <laughs> it's bad because it never goes away. So on and so forth. And I think the point too is, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I am a teacher, but am I gonna be a teacher ten years from now? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Like the, the world is so exciting and there's so many cool things out there. How can you say that I'm only gonna dedicate my time to this one thing when you don't even know what else is out there? So that's what's exciting about being a teenager and being at these international school with all these resources is that there's a lot of things that you can get involved with. You have to, like Ms. Fleming said, you're not gonna like volunteer one day at 100 things. Like there is a, a time where you should pick because that's the relationship you're going to make with someone. Yeah. But like MJ would pick. She was sort of the Sea Saver spokesperson for a very long time. But she also helped with Doggy House. So Nikki's from Doggy House, and when we went over there to help watch the puppies, she came with us. So she wasn't the president of Doggy House. She wasn't like leading Doggy House, but she certainly helped out wherever she could. Like we knew if we needed help, MJ was the girl we could go to. And that's what you want. You want to have that reputation. You want to have a reputation of somebody that we can trust and look to. And that's so when she went to college, again, you know, like she's exaggerating about her grades a little bit. They were not that great. <laughs> I am not okay. Wait, wait, I don't three point four. This is five. I mean, compared to you, eh, but eh, the point is that if you see that chart, and yeah, if you see the chart on College Board, I don't know if all of you use this, but you see there's like a cloud of students that got accepted over here, and so our our counselors tell us to look at these charts when we're like think, like making our college list and blah blah, and so there's this cloud of students, and then they plot one red dot where you fall. Was cloud of students, <laughs> MJ. <laughs> that was for GPA for Red Dot. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's it's and once again going back to like perseverance and like sticking to a goal. I said four years ago I was studying at NYU, and I am the most stubborn human being you will ever meet. And people told me like, well, you have to be more realistic. Like you also have to apply to other places, blah blah. blah. And I I applied to other places because in school I think they make us apply to like seven places, but. I never really thought about it. Like, in my mind, I was going to NYU. I was prepared to go somewhere else. Actually, I got waitlisted from NYU. I actually, I took the acceptance from Manhattanville University right outside New York. And um, I, was, I was ready to go there, but in my mind, I knew I was eventually getting to NYU. So what do you think got her into NYU? 
Extracurriculars. <laughs> Extracurriculars. What else? Teacher recommendations. Teacher recommendations. Okay. That's how much they mean. I cry. Yeah, like that's that's how much a teacher recommendation means. And, and your school, if they don't do this, Mr. Vandaloo is giving a workshop right now, so I mean, obviously not there, about how to leverage this GIN experience. You guys have chosen to miss school, be away from your family on the weekends to come to this conference. That's an amazing, awesome choice that you made. That is a great step to leading you to success. So now how are you gonna use that in this experience as a support for you to move forward? Because NYU on paper, on GPA paper, Maria Jose didn't look like a candidate that they wanted there. But you know her, is she, would she, you want her at your school? Yes, but that's what's so frustrating about applying for jobs. That's so frustrating about applying for college. They don't know you and they'll never know you if something about you doesn't stick out. So it was, I don't really enjoy writing letters of recommendation so much because they're actually really hard and it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of stress on your teachers and some of your classmates, not you, you guys are the cream of the crop. Like we're preaching to the choir here. You guys are the leaders of your school already. But some of your classmates think, ah, you're my teacher, you're supposed to write a letter, write it. I don't have to, and I can say whatever I want. And you, you need to be like kind and generous to the person that you're asking to write a letter about you to be accepted for the next four years of your life. So this is where you're looking for, you know, who brought you to this conference today? Is that a mentor that you want to be involved with and around? If not, find a teacher at your school that is. Because that person, like, Teachers, yeah. like Miss Fleming actually brought this up the other day. I'm going to share what you said. Question first. No, I just wanted to add to that. Um, as a teacher as well, I'm writing recommendations. Like, I've had students that are great in the classroom, but I don't know them in any other ah, classes besides that. Point. So it's really a shallow recommendation. You're like, oh, he's great at history. He can write a great essay. And schools but, know that. And schools know that. And if you don't do anything with those teachers outside of the classroom, um, then their, 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 their recommendation is going to be very shallow. There's not going to be much depth to it. So if you do find a teacher that you do like, um, that go does things that you are interested in, yeah. you know, yeah, right 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 and, right and go stop by the room and say hi. Yeah, yeah, talk to your teachers. I, I, a lot of times we feel like our teachers are very far away. Our teachers are mostly happy to talk to us like during lunch, break, and it's also, it, you can talk to them about anything. You don't have to go with like, okay, so I didn't understand this math problem. I, I spent every morning, Karim, me, and Jonah spent every morning in Yama's room. Just, just hanging out. Yeah. Like They don't have to be there, but they're just using my space as kind of like, instead of going to the library, they came to my space. But I want to share what Miss Fleming said yesterday. Um, or the day before, you don't remember? I have no idea where you're going. Okay. So while you guys are in your global learning villages, or your global uh, villages, while you're there, we're at this meeting of the minds, which is the adults that have brought you. And we're taking workshops, and we're learning as well. And they're teaching us lots of really cool stuff. And Miss Fleming says to me, like, should I be here? And I'm like, well, of course you should be here. Like, you're this leader, and you're awesome, and you're great. And she's like, but, but this, like, is, this, is this my thing? Like, like, kids always come to me and say, like, will you sponsor my club? But I don't know, am I, am I really, like, an environmentalist? And I'm like, uh, duh. Like, hello. So sometimes your teachers aren't standing out there saying, I'm going to do all this cool stuff. You should come to me. Sometimes you need to go to them. Every student that goes to that person, Miss Fleming, that asks her to do something, she says yes. And she helps them sponsor their club. And she does everything in her power to make sure that club's successful. But she wouldn't have done that necessarily if you didn't go to her. So there might be people in your building that aren't really doing that much because maybe they don't know what to do. And, and they're new in your country. They don't even like, we can't even go to the grocery store without being like, I don't know what to do here. Like, I don't, right, right. like you're speaking Dominican Spanish and I can't hear you because it's so fast. I don't know what you're saying, right? So that's a good point too is there might not be a trip. So guess what? Go ask one of your cool teachers in your school, hey, can we start a trip? Two years ago I said, I mean, you guys, have resources. By resources, I mean money. Like, let's just like talk what's real. So I said, why aren't we taking these kids to amazing places? Their parents have the money. Why aren't we doing something cool? So we took 18 students to Costa Rica to study turtles. Do you know how many parents were like, yes, you take my kid, and you take both my kids? Yeah, we didn't, have, we didn't have, we actually didn't have enough spaces. Yeah. This, this year, year and this year, they're going to Galapagos. Galapagos. Oh, right. I'm going to Galapagos. 
that I could get on a rock, because anybody can get on a rock. Uh, one of the guys like climbs in like flip flops. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Um, but when we were up there, we were there with Ruben Torres. He's a marine biologist. And he's like, MJ, turn around. He was making fun of me the entire time I was up there. He's like, MJ, turn around, turn around. And I'm like, Ruben, shut up. I'm trying to take a picture. He's like, no, turn around, the whales. So I turned around, and so this is the Bahia de Samana. So the Bahia de Samana, all the, all the humpback whales come to reproduce here in Dominican Republic. So the, the beach where we go is like a secluded beach in the Bahia de Samana. So I turned around, and back in the distance of like the deep, deep, deep ocean, the whales were like jumping. So you could, I could, I had that day. I had the best view of the whales that you could ever imagine, hanging from a thirty meter ledge. It was terrifying, but it was also awesome. Point being, that sometimes being stubborn pays off in more ways than you will ever expect. So this morning when MJ gave her talk, were you in the audience, did you think she was about to throw up and she was really nervous? <laughs> no, you didn't, did you? Were you about to throw up and you were really That's nervous? That's how I was thinking. I actually thought I was going to like say it at some point, because in my head, all I was repeating to myself was like, don't throw up, and if you throw up, don't throw up on top of Linda Sills, don't do this, like, <laughs> think about it, don't do this. So I think what happens is you come to these workshops and you see people who, you know, have been practicing and, they, and they've got some sort of some natural sort of skill, like she obviously has this natural skill of talking to people, and you look at her and you don't relate because you think, oh my God, if that was me, I would have died. I'd have been so nervous, I would have died. That's how she felt. So it's important to know that this process and how do you be the most successful you can be, it's the same for MJ too. She's a human being just like you. She's made of the same cells, she has the same brain, same brain waves, everything is the same. Biologically, we are the same. What makes her stand out and be different is her ability and willingness to push herself to the point of almost puking. She, last night, were you like, why did I agree to this? After Rob had finished, as, as I said today, Rob was my inspiration. You can ask her, I was obsessed with him when we went to, when we went to Brazil. And, <laughs> and um, don't make me don't embarrass me. Um, I'm too old for sister. Um, so the point is that to have he after the talk he came up to me and he was like that was an amazing job to see to have the person that I looked up to to have the person that I that I was inspired by come up to me and tell me that I had done an amazing job was just incredible and it all started with me working with teachers. We mentioned you earlier. As she's she's the crazy one. Her. The crazy one we're talking about, that's her. <laughs> the crazy annoying one that made us study coral reefs. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> on an island, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so yeah, so I guess now we're just questions. Whatever questions you have for me, for Ms. Yama, for what we do, what we've been doing. Advice, we charge. Just <laughs> that not I'm just like, So basically not even on your version of what you could do. Oh, good question. Um, so the question I don't know if you can hear because I hate when they just answer and don't repeat it. What are you doing for Sea Savers now that you're in university? Um, this is my first semester, so I'm still getting used. To, I haven't gotten involved with too many things in school because I'm still getting like used to the whole idea of like living alone, having to like fend for myself. Iron shirts. I I do not. I this is the first time I've worn an iron shirt since I moved because my nanny really ironed iron. it for me. Um, I didn't feel so weird. But the point is that. Um, I've been working with Sea Savers, just like keeping in touch, being there for them, being that they know they all know they can write to me. I am I'm probably the most annoying Sea Saver ever because I just post everything. I, everything that reminds me of Sea Savers, I post it on Facebook. So it's like keeping that contact with them and just letting them know that they can ask me if they need it. Uh, are you planning to do anything like in the future? Um, in the future. No, like Sab. For example, since you said it's your first semester, like later. Yeah, and you has a good program of like community service and stuff. I saw, uh, I couldn't talk to him, but I saw a guy with a grassroots soccer t-shirt on and I freaked out, but I haven't been able to talk to him. I've talked to people from Techo, from Techo Con País in, in the States. I've talked, there's this really cool organization that I wanna try to work with, so they, they rent canoes in the Hudson River, right? Okay, so, is it, yes. Um, so they rent canoes, but they don't rent them for money. They rent, they rent them for service. So 
you rent a canoe and you pay them by cleaning a section of the beach. Right? And I get to the canoe like every day. But the point is that, so they, the, I would be working there as like the person who like rents out the canoes. But I be like what I'm there for is because they're what they're standing for. Um, other than that, I haven't. I've been looking into different dog shelters to work with Aww. and stuff like that. I'm dog sitting, but I guess it's like when an opportunity, when an opportunity presents itself, you take you take it. So I, I up to now I, I haven't had anything like I really want to do that. I'm gonna like risk being able to balance my life to do that. But I, next year, I'm also I'm also studying abroad next semester, next year, the spring semester, in Ghana. So part of the NYU program in Ghana is service learning. So I go, I'm studying, I said this, I'm studying education. So I'd go there and teach. Why did you choose social studies and not science? Um, actually, I'm still very much thinking about that. Okay. I'm not set on that. You would be I, so hireable if you could do both. That's what, that's what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm looking for, so at NYU you can't double major if you're doing ed, secondary education. Because it said the second, if any of you want to be a teacher, I'm just going to tell you this. Um, the secondary education major at NYU is a double major within itself. So you graduate with a history degree and a teaching degree, but you are forced to pick your interest. So you have to tell them, like, I'm secondary education, social studies, secondary education, science. But I'm looking to do a minor in science. But I might switch that over and do secondary education science and get a minor in history. Because I feel like I can create a lot more change with it. Yeah. In the end, like, how did you choose teaching instead of the other things? Um, I chose teaching because I believe in you guys. I believe that students have the power to change, and that is. Because I've seen it firsthand, I've seen what all of us have like created, and I just want to empower you guys. I want to be Miss Yama. I want to be the person who's like willing to like <laughs> the, the person who's willing to like defy authority and stand up for you guys. So that's literally one of my teacher. Yeah. So, can I, so what's that secondary? So I know it's education. High school. High school. Ah, high school. I, I, my degree lets me teach from sixth grade to twelfth grade, and I graduate with my like teaching license in the state of New York. You get your license with your degree? Yeah. That's part of the that's part of what NYU makes us do. Because and also the for those of you who are not teachers, so everyone. Um the <laughs> licensing for New York State is probably one of the hardest in the country. You still have to take the test. I still have to take the test, but part of getting my degree is preparing me for that test. So you have to graduate with that. So your job is to return to your school, get a good night's rest, and be energized for the rest of the semester. It's middle of March. You have till June. Your job is to get figure out a plan. Uh, we had a speaker come to our school once, and I get really frustrated with kids sometimes. Like, what's your dream? I don't have one. Really? That's stupid. How can you not have a dream? And that's not what he said. He said, what's your dream? And you're like, uh, I don't know. He said, get one. Get one. And that's what we're going to charge you and energize you is go home, figure out how are you going to be move forward and be an active player in this thing called life. And she still has hot mail. <laughs> I, I, I can't get rid of it. I tried once. There's no good Gmail address. I didn't know my Gmail sucks, but my school works with Gmail, so now I have a Gmail account. Yeah. Um. So those are my that's my two contacts. So those are my two contacts. Um. If you guys have any questions on clubs on what we did with Sea Savers, on college, on being a teacher, studying for it at least. Um, NYU, I'm a really big NYU advocate. Everybody should go there. Um, feel free to email me. I really, I'm more than happy to answer you guys. Um, what are all the programs that you created to middle school and high school? I have a follow-up question. Okay. Sorry, but I didn't do what you're the graphic. 
Um, I, Tom's died, but I did that. The Tom, you know the shoes? The Tom's Club, I started that here. I, so it died, it died. Um, Sea Savers, I was part of the founding group of Sea Savers in, I'm just kidding at this point. Oh, okay. Um, I was one of the first people, so now our, our middle school has a peer team, so people who like orient new students when they first get here. I was one of the first, I was part of the first peer team group. Um, I, when I was like in fourth, I, I wish Mila was here. When I was like in fourth grade, that's when Mila decided that I was gonna be a problem in her life. Um, and when I was in fourth grade or something like that, when was the, Kat the Katrina? 2000. 2005? So yeah, I was in fourth grade. Um, and um, I went up to me and then I'm like, why are we doing anything about this? People are dying. And she's like, I was, I was this big, I was a fourth grader. So I'm like, people are dying and we have to do something. So I walk into her room and she's like, well, I have way too much work right now, but if you want to organize a bake sale, she obviously thought that I was not going to do anything. She gives me like a stack of papers, you have to fill these in, you have to get people to bring food, you have to do a bake sale. Like, go. I come back like a week later. Without all my papers, and she's like, Jesus. Um, okay, well now you need to go talk to maintenance. That's why I'm friends with all maintenance. Now you have to go talk to maintenance and get them and get like two tables, chairs, then you have to go up to the uh, administration building and get a money box. Nobody wanted to give me a money box. I was a four like a fourth grader, why? Um, and so on and so forth. We ended up having a huge bake sale. And it was for elementary, middle school, and high school, which I was very proud of because I was a fourth grader. And I had never talked to any high schoolers and they terrified me. But that was also for the <laughs> Yeah, that's it. <okay. laughs>